Are you looking to play Priest in Wrath of the Lich King? Then you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to cover the best race, talents, gear, glyphs, professions, and of course, macros for PvP in Season 5. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top healing, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Horde and Alliance. For Alliance, you'll want to play either Human or Dwarf. Both are good, however, Dwarf takes a slight edge in earlier seasons and Human in later seasons. Human allows you to run double PvE trinkets due to the will to survive racial, which is extremely strong, especially in later seasons. This is due to the fact that you'll be able to wear trinkets like Solace and Bauble simultaneously. Dwarf acts as a counter to Feral and Rogues due to stone form, allowing you to clear bleeds and poisons. For Horde, you'll want to play Undead. The racial will of the Forsaken acts as a second PvP trinket exclusively for fear. It shares a 40 5 seconds CD with your medallion, which means you ultimately have two PvP trinkets, one for fear and one for everything else. Next up, talents, which can be a bit confusing, so let's break it down. What's on screen is the best talent setup for Disc Priest in Season 5. We're going to cover the most notable talents as well as points you can swap around depending on the comp you're playing. Starting off with Divine Fury, this talent is great for offensive play. Even though it does reduce the cast time of your greater heal, you rarely use it. Thus, this talent only really affects your offensive abilities. So if you're playing a comp where you don't cast smites or holy fire, such as Priest Warrior or Priest DK, then you should look to swap Divine Fury out for Holy Specialization. Unbreakable Will is a must-have since it reduces the time you spend in CC and is insane against rogues. It causes fears to be lower than the combat timer, which means you can no longer get sapped off fear. It also makes it annoying for rogues to kill you in a stun since they'll have far less globals during their shadow dance. Meditation is one of the main reasons why Spirit is such a desirable stat. It essentially converts Spirit into MP5, which is important in the earlier seasons where mana regeneration is quite limited. Reflective Shield is really nice in comps where you have constant pressure like Priest Warrior or Priest Death Knight. It also allows you to 1v1 a melee class behind the pillar, forcing them to get off you, so it's very good for counter pressure. We take one talent point into Renewed Hope because a second point simply increases the proc chance. And since the buff itself lasts a whole minute, the uptime is nearly permanent even with just one point. Borrowed Time is a really interesting talent. It gives you a haste buff, which is consumed when you hard cast a spell like Flash Heal. This means that channels like Penance and instant casts like Renew will not consume it. So if you rotate your shields properly, you'll have 25% haste almost all the time, unless you have to spam cast heals, which is pretty rare. This is why you don't need to gear for haste. It synergizes greatly with Power Infusion, making it pretty common to combo the two together when you need to spam to spell. Power Infusion also reduces the mana cost of spells that you cast during its duration. This isn't too big of a deal in most scenarios, however if you're playing comps like Priest Warrior or Priest DK, it's common to use Power Infusion almost off cooldown to be as mana efficient as possible. Paladins are super OP in Wrath, which means you're going to face them a lot, which is why Focus Power is so strong. A near instant mass dispel cast completely counters Paladins since you can dispel bubbles super fast. Additionally, it can be used to stop drinks, keep players in combat, and even be used to dispel your teammates if they're behind the pillar. The Talent Grace causes your Greater and Flash heals as well as Penance to apply a healing received buff on the target, stacking up to 3 times. This is obviously good due to higher healing output, but more importantly it acts as Dispel Protection. It's therefore common practice for Priests to channel a Penance to apply this buff whenever they want to protect a buff like Fear Ward. Saving the best to last, Pain Suppression. This ability is your greatest defensive, however its main downside is the long cooldown. What's nice about the CD though is that it lines up with major CDs like Summon Gargoyle and Berserk, which means if traded properly you'll have it available every time. Next up we have Glyphs. There are a lot to choose from so it can be a bit overwhelming but let's break it down. Starting off with the major Glyph slots. If you're short on cash, you want to prioritize getting the Glyph of Pain Suppression. Without it, Rogues and Ferals will eat you alive. Keep in mind experienced players will follow up their stun with a silence so you can't use pain suppression. The way to counter this is to react fast and use it before the silence lands. Practice makes perfect. 
Glyph of Power Word Shield is amazing for a couple of reasons. It further amplifies your shield, which is one of your most used abilities in Arena, but more importantly, it gives you an instant heal, which means that if you're getting spam purged, then you'll still get value from pressing your shield. And for your last major glyph, we have Glyph of Penance, which is obviously solid since it reduces the CD of one of your major abilities. For the minor glyphs, you want to make sure you get your hands on Glyph of Fortitude. You'll often find yourself rebuffing Fortitude on your teammates mid-arena due to purges, and since it's incredibly expensive, this glyph is needed. The last two miners we recommend are Glyph of Shadow Fiend and Shackle Undead. These are not too important, so if you're lacking gold, don't sweat it. It's time to go over your gear. We will break things down into two stages, Prebis and Final Best in Slot. Before that, let's cover your stat priority, which is as follows. Brazil, then 4% hit, followed by MP5, then Spell Power, followed by Spirit, with Haste as your least important stat. Resilience is easily the most important stat in Season 5. If you don't stack it, classes that rely on crits like rogues will absolutely obliterate you in two globals. MP5 and Spirits are important because Priest healing is primarily gated behind its mana bar. Knowing all this, it should be no surprise that you need to put Resilience gems in yellows, Brazil Spell Power Split Gems in reds, Brazil MP5 Split Gems in blues, and the Mana Proc Meta Gem. Now onto your gear sets, starting off with your Prebis. This is the gear set you want to aim for in the first two weeks of the expansion. What you see on screen is all things that can be acquired before the arena season starts. Everything is either BOEs that you can buy from the auction house, dungeon gear from normal and heroics, or just honor gear that is easily grindable. Loop of the Kirin Tour can simply be purchased for gold, depending on your reputation with the Kirin Tour faction. It is expensive, but due to inflation on launch, you should be able to farm the gold pretty quickly. For non-humans, you want to just replace Spark of Life with a medallion. Everything else remains the same. For your actual full bis set, you're looking to get the majority of your gear from PvP. This is because you want to stack as much resilience as possible, which isn't something you're going to get from raid items. The rest of your gear comes from raiding. Some of these pieces can be replaced with a PvP alternative, however items like living ice crystals can't, making it a must-have in Season 5. This trinket essentially allows you to heal your partners even while silenced, making it a great counter to DKs. For all the non-humans out there, you want to look to replace the Battlemaster with a medallion, however everything else stays the same. <coughs> the only thing that changes is your rating, which is guaranteed to go up by using skillcap.com. So make your gear actually matter by visiting the link below. Next up, we have Professions, which in Wrath gives you some bonuses in combat. Although it may hurt your pile of gold sitting in the bank, we strongly recommend you get your hands on Jewel Crafting and Engineering. Jewel Crafting gives you the highest stat boost compared to the other options in Season 5, which comes in the form of Amplified Gems that you can only have three of. This is huge, since normal Epic Gems aren't available until Season 7, making the stat difference between the normal gems and the Jewel Crafting exclusives that much bigger. Engineering is the most important one of the two though. This is because of the hand-mounted Pyro Rocket Glove Enchant, which acts as an additional 2-3k damage off the GCD on a relatively short cooldown. On a setup, this can be comboed with a Penance for huge burst. This is especially good in Season 5 due to the fact that it doesn't scale off anything. The damage is static, so it's obviously going to be the strongest in the Arena season where players' HP pools are the lowest. Finally, we have Macros. Luckily for you, Disc Priests are not very macro intensive. Starting off light, we have a Quality of Life Macro. It casts Mind Control if you're not currently controlling someone, and if you are, then it cancels the Mind Control effect. Without this macro, you'd have to manually click to cancel the Mind Control. For quick Mass Dispels, we recommend this macro. It basically just stops your current cast, followed by a Mass Dispel at wherever your cursor is located. This allows you to bypass the left mouse click that is normally required to Mass Dispel. Seeing as Penance can be used on both allies and enemies, having a macro to cast it on yourself is pretty important. This macro allows you to keep targeting enemy players while penancing yourself. Shadow Word Death can be used to break CC that breaks on damage if timed correctly. And since it can be difficult to target an enemy to cast it, while you're currently healing your teammate, having a macro to automatically target an enemy with it is ideal. There are a few ways to deal with this issue. One way is to use a cast death at focus macro. Main drawback from this is that it kind of forces you to always have the player whose CC you're trying to break on focus all the time. Another way is to use a target scan macro that simply casts shadow word death on the nearest enemy. This is the easiest solution, however if the nearest enemy is in a CC then you might break it accidentally. 
And the final solution is to use Arena 123. This is by far the best solution, since it allows you to choose exactly who you want to cast Shadow Word Death on without actually targeting them. The main drawback of this is that you'll need a lot of keybinds. We recommend that you use the method that works best for you. The following macro casts Power Infusion on yourself. Now, although you do want to sometimes PI your allies, a lot of the time you don't. Having to manually target yourself to cast Power Infusion can be annoying, especially if you're spam healing your teammate. We recommend you get your hands on this one. The same concept applies for Fear Ward. Generally, you want to use Fear Ward on yourself right as you're about to be feared to outplay your opponent. But if you're busy healing your partner while having to Fear Ward, then you kind of need this macro. Otherwise, you might accidentally Fear Ward your partner. The macro also removes the possibility that your opponent knows what you're trying to do by reading their target of target frame. Now, say you're weaving in healing your teammates while dispelling your opponent's buffs. This would require you to constantly swap targets, which can be kind of awkward. That's when a Focus Dispel Magic macro comes in clutch. This macro essentially allows you to never waste globals. The final macro we have for you is arguably the most impactful one. Although it looks complicated, it really isn't. The macro will cast Shadow Fiend onto your target if your target is an enemy. However, if your target is an ally, then it'll cast Shadow Fiend onto your target's target. If your Shadow Fiend is already out, however, then it simply commands your pet to attack your target if your target is an enemy, and if your target is an ally, then it'll simply command your pet to attack your target of target. Additionally, it'll cast your Shadow Fiend's ability, Shadow Crawl. What's important to know about this ability is that it acts as a gap closer, which means you want to be pressing it whenever your Shadow Fiend is getting kited. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your plans for Wrath of the Lich King. Will you be playing Disc Priests? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.